Hey, Dave here again with Soul Home. I know it's been a while, but a lot has been going on in the background here. Uh, we are proud to be new partners with Tesla, now offering their one and only Powerwall 3. Uh, and let me tell you, this thing is an absolute monster. I am, it's hard to impress me, but I'm pretty blown away with what this is capable of, how easy it is to install, how much money it's saving our homeowners, and just the capability of this unit, especially how easy it is with the backup switch, which we'll show you here in a little bit. So we'll start with the Powerwall 3 itself. Um, lots going on here in a very small space. This thing weighs just under 300 pounds, so it's fairly close to what the Powerwall Plus weighed. Um, well, actually the Powerwall 2, the Powerwall Plus has the, the extra solar inverter on top, but this is close to the Powerwall 2. It's actually lighter than the Powerwall Plus because it did have that extra solar inverter, but the inverter for the solar is now built into this unit. It's all one package. The guys just get it up mounted on the wall, they wire it up, and and turn the thing on. We have it on right now. It's actually doing a system update. Um, but this thing, as you'll see on the specs on the side and other things that you can find online, uh, it's a 13.5 kilowatt lithium iron phosphate battery that's down here where these uh, heat sink cooling fins are. And it has a, uh, an output, a continuous output of 11.5 kilowatts, which is great. I mean, you're talking almost 50 amps continuous. Um, for most people, that's that's plenty for a whole home backup in an, in an average home. Uh, it does have a peak starting amp rating of 185 amps, which is just insanely high for one inverter. Uh, th that will start basically any residential five-ton air conditioner, and that's what you need. You need that peak starting current because what we used to ha what we used to have to do was install a soft starter on, on those air conditioners so that it would run when the grid was down. Don't have to do that anymore either. So it, they're really bringing down the cost of labor with this device. Again, they managed to squeeze a lot of features into a very small space. So let me kind of walk you through these uh, ins and outs of the Powerwall 3. So we do have our AC connections here, our neutral line one and line two. This goes back to that 60 amp breaker that's on the main panel. Uh, we do have our ground connections and Tesla's actually really good about using shielded communication cables uh, for all of their equipment, uh, especially their sensitive electronics. They do have a drain wire from the, the shielded cables they use here for comms. Um, so that one would be going to the backup switch we have mounted on the outside of the house. Um, over here, we do have our DC connections to the solar on the roof. So this system has two strings of solar. So we have two positives and two negatives. Uh, Tesla, again, really good with their shielding. They, uh, shielding they ask us to use these ferrite cores um, on both the AC and the DC connections. Now they do have an optional, there's a shield that goes over this now, but we've found that the fitment is not great. It actually kind of stands a little proud and it seems to me that it compromises the seal on, on the, the, uh, the cover that goes on here that has a gasket on it. So we're not using that right now until hopefully Tesla fixes that one tiny little fitment issue. Um, then we'll start using that instead of, you know, clipping cores, uh, onto the, the DC connections here. But this device here, this printed circuit board, uh, they call it the Tesla asset controller or the taco for short. So you'll hear people talk about the taco. That's this brain right here. Um, you can see where we have our communications and power wire to the backup switch that goes out to the backup switch that's mounted behind the meter uh, on the main service panel. Uh, we do have a rapid shutdown connections here. This goes to a normally closed switch that's outside, which we can uh, we can show you here. And uh, we do have uh, these Ethernet ports here. And this is for either connecting a hardwired Ethernet connection if you don't have Wi-Fi within range, uh, or if you have multiple power walls, you're going to plug into one of these Ethernet ports and connect it over to the one beside it. And one will become the master and one will become the slave unit and they just talk to each other and they just work. It's it's beautiful. So a couple of new things that Tesla will be rolling out into the future that's not available right now and I'm really I'm excited for them to roll them out when they come and I'll tell you why. Uh, so a couple things is the load control. So you see LC positive and LC negative. So what th what this will allow you to do is to connect to a relay and I, it, I think it'll be a dry contact where if it's open or closed, uh, it'll change its state depending if the power wall is on grid or off grid. That's how I believe it's going to work. And I've seen 
documentation that's kind of vague from Tesla that it, that is how it's going to work. So um, makes sense to me that they would have load control on this. They do have it on their, their older generations. They just haven't updated that software feature yet for whatever reason. And the other thing that's really cool is we have, if you look at the top of this connector here, it actually says RS-485. And that RS-485 is kind of a standard communications protocol uh, between, you know, just circuit boards. And I'm pretty sure, and I haven't seen this from Tesla, but I'm pretty sure um, they're going to be coming out with their remote meter and it's going to plug. I could only imagine that's where it's going to plug into, but they say right now these, these ports are non-functional, but the, what the remote meter will let us do is it will let us AC couple with an existing system. So if you already have a solar uh, inverter on your house, you already have solar, you have an inverter that's grandfathered in on net metering 1.0. Um, we can, we, we need to be able to measure that solar somehow. It needs to be metered and the Tesla has to be able to see that to, to know when to make decisions, when to power the house, when to backfeed, uh, backfeed the grid or not. So by plugging that meter into here, it will see all of that data. Uh, right now you can only do that if you install the Tesla backup switch and if you do that then you have to install a whole backed up load sub panel and you're talking thousands of dollars of extra work and you know the direction that the industry is going is is you know less materials less pieces of equipment and, and so on so once that is released that'll plug right into here you'll be able to AC couple with an existing system just by hooking up two wires to to a, a current transformer CT. Yeah, so once you're done wiring all of this up, which we are, uh, we do need to get inspection still on this unit, so I'm, I'm going to leave it a little bit open for now. Um, but I, I do want to show you the cover. Um, so this is the actual glass cover that's going to go on the front of the unit. Um, really, really sleek, really high quality. Um, you can see these, these brackets they have here. Um, gosh, it looks like stainless steel to me. And that would make sense since, since this is outdoor rated. You can see they have this rubber gasket here. And that, that really compresses when, when it goes against the, uh, that aluminum, that milled aluminum uh, housing for the power wall. And, and that's what gives it its outdoor rating. So um, we'll get that on here in a little bit. But until then, I would like to take you outside and show you what's going on out there with the backup switch and the AC connections. So we just had the Tesla backup switch installed. They just left here a little bit ago. So I'm really excited. We can finally plug in our connector here. So this is the communications uh, cables that go basically to the taco that we just saw um, on the inside of the garage uh, on the power wall. So this literally uh, just plugs right up into the port on the back. Let's see if I can click that in there. All right, got it. That goes right up into there. And then once you get that on there, we, all you have to do is just put this cover on here, and three screws, and you're done. Well, I'll do that off camera. You don't need to watch me screw things in. Um, so, but on the AC side of things, we are tied into a 60 amp breaker. Now, some of you keen solar installers or electricians out there may notice that this is only a, a 200 amp rated panel. So, you know, you may ask, how are we how are we putting 60 amps on a 200 amp panel uh, legally? Because even the max rating for the bus bars is only 200 amps. It's not a 225. Um, the, the way that you can do it, and as far as I know, I think Tesla is the only one in, in the game doing this where they're using PCS, power control systems, to, to allow you to install a larger breaker because um, normally you're bound by the 120% rule, so you can only do 20% more than what the bus bars are rated at, uh, which would be a 40 amp breaker on a 200 amp service. We can do 60, which allows us to have more backup power when the grid is disconnected. And the, the way we get a, 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 how we get away with that with Tesla is they call it their virtual panel. It actually has a meter in here and it can meter in real time how much you're pulling from the grid and how much the power wall is providing to all the loads in the house. So if it ever gets close to it's 160 amps on a, on a 200 amp main, it'll actually attenuate the power wall down to make sure you stay under 160 amps continuous. In fact, if you go above it, it'll just turn, the Tesla will turn off and you're just pulling from grid like you normally would. Very, very cool. Uh, the, the big feature and benefit of that is you can have more power 
coming in as backup or on your daily loads when you're, you know, from four to nine when the battery's discharging to keep you off those peak rates um, than you would with a normal, normal like what other system, the, the other manufacturers, where you would be maxed at a 40 amp breaker or you would have to derate this main breaker and take it down to maybe a 175. So you get the same benefits without having to pay the labor and the materials to change this breaker out. So another really cool uh, feature that they're using power electronics to meet code. So I talked earlier about how Tesla is coming out with their remote meter, which will allow you to AC couple with existing solar systems. Uh, so there's another way that if you do have existing panels, you could incorporate the Powerwall 3, and that's what this homeowner did. Uh, he did have an existing inverter. I think that thing was going on maybe 10, 12 years old, starting to go on the fritz a little bit. He wasn't totally confident that it would uh, you know, last as long as he'd want to. Um, so we simply replaced that inverter, which was right behind this gate. You can kind of see the line of where uh, they had done a, a stucco patch on that side of that line when he did a remodel. Um, we there, we got rid of that inverter and 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 simply replaced it with the Powerwall three in the garage. Um, so what we had to do was extend the existing lines down. You can see there's this new conduit here. Um, or rather we extended the conduit, pulled the lines through into those MPPTs that we saw on the Powerwall 3. And um, so that's another solution. And we are programming the Powerwall 3 to export the same uh, kilowatts, the same rating of power that the, uh, the existing inverter was uh, authorized to export through the net metering application. So he can keep his net metering 1.0 and... Um, you know, it's, it's a great solution if you want to add storage um, and, you know, like I'm done with this inverter or if, you're, if your inverter breaks um, or if it's uh, on the fritz or it's just not working right and it's time to get a new one, um, this is a great option. And uh, I, don't, I don't think you could do it cheaper by adding a battery and getting a new inverter and all the benefits that this system has to offer, especially with the whole home backup. So for those of you that don't know, this backup switch, what this does, this allows you to back up your entire house without having to do a whole other sub panel, a backed up load sub panel. So you, you need a way to disconnect from the grid when the grid goes down, if you want to keep powering your house. So that's what this does and it makes it so easy. And normally if you don't have this, this relay, this switch essentially that, that switches you off grid right here at the meter, you know, it, it's the, the relay is built into the inverter, say like inside where the power wall is, or if you use the um, the, the backup gateway, that's where the, the relay is, the contactor that takes you off grid. So if you do that, you have to like take all of these circuits, you know, out of your main panel that you want to be backed up. You'd have to take all these out of here and put in a new backed up loads panel beside it. It's a lot of extra labor. It's a lot of extra materials. It's a couple extra days of work if it's if conditions are tough um, and ends up being thousands more. But Tesla solved it with this system. And for us, less than $1,000, you can have whole home backup with an inverter that is actually capable of whole home backup, starting air conditioners, pool pumps, you name it. Um, now, granted, you would be limited by the size of the fuel tank of that power wall, which is, you know, 13 and a half kilowatt hours. Um, so you might want to think about doing two if you want it to last through a longer blackout or, um, you know, you have a bunch of cloudy days in a row and it's not not able to uh, recharge that, that power wall. So this is an amazing step forward in making uh, backup off-grid uh, possible for for most homeowners uh, saves a lot of money so that's it um, this system's up and running and uh, making power saving the customer a bunch of money so if this is uh, something that you're looking to do in the uh, Southern California area specifically San Diego would be would be nice but you know we do travel north um, if we need to but um, yeah we're we're moving a lot of these right now just the, the the bang for the buck it's it's really hard to uh to compete with so uh give us a call or visit the website www.mysoulhome.com thanks so we just kind of wrapped up filming here and i came back into the garage and i heard just a little fan running and i thought it might be interesting to hear what type of noise the power wall makes compared to to other solutions now the solar is putting out about four thousand watts right now so 
not not a whole lot compared to the the maximum input of this is about 20,000 watts well 20,000 watts DC I mean really about 18 uh, 16 to 18,000 of actually you know uh, inverting or charging the batteries with but you can barely hear the fans there's a shroud here with this fans behind here if you see the back and I, th I have a picture of that maybe we can we can lay that over this video. Um, so, and the way it works is once this cover is on, it's gonna draw air up through this screen here over these fins. And we're told there's lithium iron phosphate behind here. Uh, I don't know if that's accurate or not. We have to rely on Tesla for that, but I do feel these are a little warm. So, but what those fans will do is draw the air up over these, these heat sinks up into this duct here. And that brings it up behind the the taco the tesla asset controller so if this has any heat it'll it'll throw it out the back and there's a little a little channel back here for that to dissipate but so that's 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 as loud as it, it's as loud as this system has gotten i don't know if it gets louder if you've got more uh, solar coming in so that's what it sounds like you know and from five feet away i can barely hear it it's really quiet.